Hello there again, minions. Wheezy here with another War College Breakdown. Today I'm going to talk about some sniper gameplay that I had. I'll kind of talk you through it as we go. Um, this isn't going to be as step-by-step -step a breakdown as my last one. This is going to be more of a conceptual overview uh, of how I was sniping during this gameplay. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy it, and let's just get right into it. So let me get my ugly mug off the screen here and uh, just start it up. So this is a... It's, it's actually, I took four clips from two different gameplays. This one is a team deathmatch uh, in Modern Warfare. They, one after this is a domination. But I was going for, as you guys may know, I've been going for the uh, reptile camo unlocks for a lot of the Modern Warfare weapons recently, which means using no attachments. And um, so I was doing that for the HDR. So this is a naked HDR. Since it's a sniper rifle, it obviously has a scope on it, um, as opposed to the marksman rifles, which would be iron sights. So I don't really have the ability to use attachments to increase aim down sight speed or really kind of build this weapon out to be more flexible. So I have to kind of use it in a more traditional sniper role of being mostly stationary, having a long ADS time. So this gameplay breakdown is going to talk about that. So what I'm doing up here uh, in Scrapyard is essentially there's all of these windows on this one side which give you a good overlook as a sniper because you can't be as mobile with a weapon like this running around quick scoping. Um, and it also gives you decent safety because people don't look up here often. But because it has all of these different windows you can move between, you don't have to be predictable in that you, you don't have to sit in a single window where it's relatively simple for the enemies to find you. Now, when I say that, once you get on any kind of streak as a sniper, especially a stationary sniper, people will, come, will see you in the kill cam and they will start looking for revenge. They will tr start coming back to try and get you. So there you saw that Saw character <laughs> shooting up at me. So he's already coming after me because um, I've already killed him. So... We're going to pause right here as um, I've got a few kills now. You can see I've got a four kill streak going here. And the, our team has pushed kind of across the map here. And I have a teammate up here with me. But in reality, the enemy team is likely to start spawning near here. And since I already know that some of these um, people have been... Um, trying to shoot at me already that I started to snipe, I can expect that people are probably going to start attacking me from down here relatively shortly. Now since I'm using the naked HDR, I might be able to get a snipe on someone, but I also have a pistol in my pocket, so that's most likely what I would need to rely on for an up-close engagement, but now I'm starting to be aware of footsteps and people coming after us now. I put down a trophy system to try and help uh, defend me in case they throw grenades up here since I'm using um, the pro version of uh, my field upgrade. And so now I've got, I've got a teammate up here luckily, um, but I've got my sniper rifle and I missed my shot. So I'm trying to survive here while I'm getting pushed. And what I'm hoping for is if I can kill him and win this fight, then hopefully my, the, the spawns will flip again and they won't necessarily spawn right back here. Um, but another thing to keep in mind, because I'm doing a challenge unlock, like I'm trying to unlock camos for this gun, I'm not necessarily looking to have a flawless gameplay here. Uh, I'm trying to get kills, um, but so my, my overall gameplay strategy here is a little different than usual. I'm not, you know, as, as tactical as I would be since I'm trying to fill this very specific role of getting kills with this naked HDR. So I do manage to finish that guy off with a pistol as my teammate up here um, gets uh, gets killed. Now, one thing I will point out here is after I kill that guy, I am now aware that essentially their enemy spawn is right here because our team is still over on this end of the map. So basically I'm gonna be getting enemy spawns all around me. So now that I've unlocked this cluster strike, the reason I'm gonna call it right here against this wall is because if I splash it right on this wall, mark it like right here, then it's going to essentially hit in kind of a circle like this. So I will get some splash outside of the building here. Um, and the idea is 
if the enemy team is spawning around in this area, it will at least keep them away from here and funnel them down to this direction. So at least I don't have as many areas to cover. So I call that in, decide to move across just so I'm not likely to get hit by if it, if it does splash through the, the roof. Um, another teammate's coming in through the bottom as he's engaging the guy who came down there. So the guy did not get that revenge kill on that. So I can turn back outward again to see if I can get some more snipes. Again, not being predictable in a single window. The guy is set up in the other window. Get another kill. And I uh, believe there's another one after that. So the idea here, as a more stationary sniper, is to not be predictable. If you just sit in a single window, then people will know where to look for you. So for instance, that guy respawned, went back to the same spot. I know where to look for him. There's five, six windows up here. So it's going to be harder for people to locate me uh, when they do that. Pop a new trophy system. This guy came back. Does finally get me. So we're going to roll straight into the next um, into the next gameplay here. So this is the same match. Uh, I believe this is actually probably right after that death. Um, I spawned on the other side because, again, the, the spawns had flipped. And so now I'm looking to set up here. Now, the reason I've set up a little bit further back initially is, again, I don't want to be sitting straight up at the front of the window just because that really exposes me, hanging my gun barrel out. Um, so I'm doing this to kind of limit my, my angles of sight and make it harder for the enemy to spot me. So if I can grab a frame here. What I'm talking about is since I'm further back in the room, when I'm looking... Let's see, can I do a, uh, do a simple line? No, come on, give me a, give me a line. <laughs> uh, shift, there we go. So I've got these angles here, right? Which, which limits where I can see, but it also limits so that people on the outside of my frame of view uh, can't see me as well either. So the closer you move up to the window, the wider that angle gets, right? Like if I'm right up in the window, I can see a lot more, but a lot more people can see me too. So that's always something to keep in mind is how visible you are when you're sniping um, so that you limit your exposure. If I were sitting in the window right now looking on this left side, I would be exposed to enemies on this side of the map. So as you can see where I am here, because of how far I'm set back in the room, I have a very limited angle of what I can see, but at the same time, all of these other areas can't see me either. So that that gives me, you know, more protection here. And as I'm moving forward, you know, again, by staying further back from the window, I limit those lines of sight so that I'm in less danger from the enemies attacking me. So that's a, a good tip as well for when you're sniping, as opposed to the other side where you can see, if I can drop that trophy, um, the you can see the I'm opposite of the map where I was sniping earlier. Um, and there are all of the windows across the top, which again, okay, so there's a smoke here now. <laughs> Great. So you can see there's all these windows up here, which is where I can move around one to the next. And so even if there's a sniper over here in my position, it makes me hard to predict. Here, for the angles I want to look, there's really just this window and then the other window over here. Um, but I'm primarily working this window right now. So I know that I'm in a more vulnerable position in general. So I don't want to be at the window where I'm exposing myself to uh, the entire map. I would rather sit further back in here and limit my exposure, as well as continuing to be mindful of the fact that people coming into the building are going to be the biggest threat to me right now. Because again, I only have a pistol as a sidearm. So, uh, At the same time, I'm looking for people to kill. I'm also listening for footsteps. And um, that guy again, looking for me. He's, he's seen that I'm sitting over here. So now I know as I'm continuing to look for sniper kills, I also have to be aware that people are now again going to be coming for me. So once you get a couple of kills, you are going to get, especially as a sniper, because it's an instant kill that is frustrating to people, they will come back and try to revenge kill you. So I heard footsteps. Uh, was most likely ended up being a teammate. I threw that stun just to do a stun check, see if anyone was down there, and then continue looking back for some snipes to hit. So... I'm going to move on to a, another gameplay here um, in just a second where uh, I drop another tro trophy system here where on domination I'm completing this challenge but also doing a little bit more where I'm trying to also do some mounted challenges. So I get rushed here, I got my pistol out, I can hear the footsteps and then they 
start. Oh, they, it's, it's after this. I guess I get pushed by two more people. And they finally overwhelm me with grenades and automatic weapons. Again, I use that cluster to try to deter people from moving up the left side of the building. My trophy system is clearing out grenades. This guy's trying to come back for me. And I do get cleaned out. So um, let's move into the next uh, clip from a domination game. And what I'm doing here, again, is still completing these reptile challenges. Uh, reptile camo challenges, but I'm also working on getting some mounted challenges. So here you can see I'm being pretty mobile trying to clear this long line of sight to be, um, but then I move up and I set up on the barrier. Now you can see this has the advantage of steadying my scope, um, but I'm also completely stationary now. So part of what I'm trying to do here is protect this area. And what I want is I want my reticle to be placed nearest to where I expect to see threats. So I've kind of, by default, will hover around this area because the places you're gonna to expect to see people is either hopping up on this wall, this is a really popular place because it's basically a head glitch here, um, coming around the side of this wall here or coming around this pillar here from uh, essentially mid-map up here. So there's um, you know, an, an alleyway from that where people can come out. So if I keep my reticle about here, then it allows me to move um, then it allows me to move my reticle relatively quickly to those places versus if I kept it up here, for instance, and then I have to move further. So I'm trying to keep this where I expect to see people. Um, and as you'll see, I'll kind of take cues of when my teammates are going up protecting B and I see gunfire or explosions coming from the right-hand side, I can readjust. So there a guy walks right into my crosshairs. That makes it an easy kill for me. And I'm just maintaining awareness of where I expect to see people. Now I've killed a couple of people, you know, I've got three kills, so I'm expecting people to maybe try and come back looking for me. And so the head glitch would be a good place to counter my position, so I'm focused more there. And as I see teammates moving up, I know that at this point the enemy also has C, um, so I have to be aware of teammates um, and enemies potentially coming from that way. So as I get this reload, I'll pause real quick. You can see right now I got teammates up here at B, I've got a teammate back here, and then I've got C, which is actually very close to me on this side over here. So I need to be really aware of this area for enemies potentially coming and flanking me since I am absolutely not looking that way. So I, as I'm aimed down sights here, I am checking that radar pretty constantly to see you know, if I'm becoming vulnerable in that area. So as they kind of hop out, I call this cluster, switch to the pistol. That's not really... That teammate clears out that kill. Trophy system again, trying to protect me from getting grenaded out behind cover. And then now, I, I'm also hearing footsteps, but I'm also noticing that there's an open area here. So I'm checking with my pistol over there. Switch back to the sniper to see if there's anything back here. Now I do hear footsteps right after this. And as we can see, I've now got teammates up here at B. They've captured A, captured C, and there's no one over here. So I can expect enemies to be coming from my right hand side now. So I'm listening for footsteps when I hear them. Pistol switch, get that kill. Ideally, I'd like to not have a pistol, so after my reload, I pick up the M4 that guy had, look for enemies coming that way. I do manage to get killed by a guy coming through there, but you can see how I'm trying to defend my flank. So I'll pull up the last clip that we're gonna cover here and try and quickly go through it where, again, I'm respawning, I'm going back to that position. Because again, as far as where we are in the map right now, it's the best place for me to get sniper kills. I run a stun check just to see if I can, if anyone is out here, I want them to be off guard so I can clean them up so that I can then take my position here. The other position on this map that I would wanna be is on that wall side where I'm looking and then I can either you know, check this way or watch out towards the A side from that direction. Um, but this is where our spawn is, so that's what I'm trying to clean up. I got a hit marker there. This one goes just a little bit high. Uh, clear that guy on the head glitch there. You can kind of see that. A little bit of a clinch there when I was aiming. That's why I kind of jumped off the mount during that. That guy got me to flinch right as I fired. So I use a mazel top to try and push him back. And then I'm setting back up so when he peeks back out, I can clean that up. So we're in a similar situation again here. Now they've got us triple cap. So I'm helping support our teammates at B. Acknowledging that... As a stationary sniper, I'm not gonna be as effective in domination as if I grabbed an assault rifle and started getting out there capturing points. Again, the larger context here is I'm trying to complete these camo unlocks. So part of this breakdown is to show you how your play style 
can adapt and needs to adapt based on what you're trying to accomplish in the game. If I were just pure try-hard trying to win the game, I'd switch weapons and go and do the capture here, but that's not the, the point of what we're doing here. So again, I see the teammates moving that way. I hear footsteps nearby. I hear two sets of footsteps, so I kill that guy. I know there's someone else there. I go to pick up weapon. It's a pistol that guy's got out, so I switch over to the assault rifle, and I want to make sure that I have that uh, in my pocket in case I need to defend another flank from the right hand side. So I'm looking for more snipes here, being aware of enemies coming up. I'm listening for footsteps, get a kill there, seeing those gunshots coming from that side, get another kill, see this guy hopping over there, clean that up with the triple kill. Then I hear footsteps again, super close. Matter of fact, this guy kind of, well, not here, here in just a second. So here I can hear footsteps super close. Like, if the guy had come around the box to the left instead of the right, I'd have been immediately dead. Um, but, I, again, using that cluster strike to try and protect my flank from people pushing over that side. And then pushing back to my position. New trophy system going down. But, unfortunately, we just gave up that match at the end there. Taking the L, so not great. So, um... But, as far as me trying to accomplish my, you know, challenges, I made a lot of progress in this game. So, um, hopefully, let me see if I can switch back over here. Hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Um, hopefully that's a good kind of breakdown of how you can change your play style to support the weapon that you're using. If you don't necessarily have the option to build out a really fast, quick scoping sniper rifle and you're kind of handicapped by what's available, or maybe you're just starting out and you've just unlocked a weapon, and you don't have all the good attachments for it. This can help you kind of look at it from that perspective too. So if you guys enjoyed that breakdown, leave me a like. If you guys aren't really liking this format, leave me comments, leave me a dislike, and let me know that you want me to change up something so I can make things better to help you guys get better at shooting people in the face. I'm starting to feel like that's almost becoming my catchphrase for Wheezy's War College. I need to help you shoot people in the face. <laughs> Subscribe if you guys want to see more like this if you're not already if you are subscribed you're already a minion and I already love you And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye